Time goes so fast when you're having fun, and it's rebuilding a very old horizontal steam engine, part 11, the piston rod and the crosshead cotter pin. Firstly though, I thought to myself, I wonder if I can resurrect the original piston rod, because I do like to keep the things original. And it was quite nicely made at one time, but now it's well past its best, it's very badly pitted. So firstly, I faced off the piston rod at the piston end, drilled a centre hole, so I could put a life centre in there and hold it in the chuck as you see here. But the news is not good, it really is in a bit of a state. It's extremely badly pitted, and the pits are deep. So I don't have the choice really, I need to make a new piston rod. The other problem that I noticed when I first looked at this engine is that someone had put a packing washer at the crosshead end to move the position of the piston. So the new piston rod that I'm going to make is going to have a facility to adjust the position of the piston along the rod at the piston end. It's a pity I couldn't use this really, it would have saved considerable time, but then again I wouldn't have had this episode. Now over to this hideous crosshead. I'll remove that bit, I don't need it for the moment. So I'm cleaning up the main crosshead to piston rod bearing. This is a cast iron part, and it's a little bit rusty like the rest of the engine was. And the first thing I notice is that the keyway hole is very roughly drilled and filed and a bit of a mess. This part of the engine really was bad. If you watch the first episode when it's running, you can see it moving. And the cotter pin that was originally in this slot was just a rattle fit, as indeed was the piston rod. There was also a loud clunk at every stroke as the piston rod changed direction, because it was such a sloppy fit. So my solution is as follows. First of all, I'm going to make a brand new piston rod, starting with some 3 8 diameter steel in the three-jaw chuck of my little Boxford lathe. And I'm turning down the end to be a push fit into the crosshead part. I don't want this to be a really tight fit, but I don't want it to be a sloppy fit either. It's got to be just right. There may come a time in the future when someone wants to change the piston ring, and if this is a tight fit it will be very difficult to get the piston rod out. But I don't want it to be a fit like this, this is really sloppy. The new piston rod is a much better fit. It feels altogether better. What I need to do now is reform the slot all the way through the new piston rod and the crosshead part to take a new cotter pin. And so once again I'm reaching for my trusty Loctite 603. This is retaining compound, and this wonderful compound will hold the two parts together with more than enough strength to allow me to mill a slot through the crosshead as well as all the way through the piston rod at the same time. And before I forget, I received a message from a viewer. I never mentioned when I removed the flywheel on the last episode that to get rid of the stub mandrel, I heated it up. If you heat up Loctite, it will give way. You don't have to heat it up to a red heat, you just need to get it fairly hot. So once I milled the slot in the crosshead all the way through, I made a simple key to fit it. This is a taper key, which was tapped into place using a small hammer. This is of course a temporary measure, and I removed it immediately for the next part of the process. As I mentioned earlier, I noticed there was a packing washer in place on this engine. So I'm making this piston rod adjustable, and the first thing I'm doing after marking off the length is cutting a thread on the end of it. This thread is 3 8 by 32 threads per inch, a very fine thread. And just to verify that the thread is not too tight or too slack, I'm fitting a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch union nut on the end of the piston rod, and everything seems to be okay. This is a very fine thread, and here it is compared with the original. The original thread was 3 8 Whitworth, which is a very coarse thread. Mine will allow a finer adjustment. This is a 2 inch outside diameter silicone piston ring, and I get these from my friends at Blackgates Engineering, and the address is on screen at the moment. But before I can use this piston ring in the engine, I need to machine the piston to take it. This piston originally had a leather piston ring, which was very hard and didn't seal. It is essential that you get the groove the right depth and the right width. It's no good nipping the ring, and it's no good if the ring is pushed hard against the cylinder walls. That will just cause it to wear out prematurely. My friend Philip at Blackgates gave me the data on a piece of paper, but you can get this from a thing like a Zeus book, or generally engineering data off the web. Each silicone piston ring needs the correct dimensions in the piston itself to allow the ring to function. 
One of the dimensions has to be the outside diameter of the piston itself, which has to be smaller than the cylinder bore. Just for a change, I'm not using my fingers, I'm being civilised, I'm using a paintbrush to oil the cylinder, and then oil the piston. This is steam oil. I always recommend using steam oil on silicone piston rings because engine oil will make the piston ring a little bit sticky. The piston, by the way, is threaded 3 8 by 32 threads per inch, and then I made a brass lock nut for each side of it, so when I come to put the engine together finely, I'll be able to make fine adjustments. It goes into the cylinder, and it's a good fit. I'm having to be a little careful when I fit the piston to the cylinder that I don't damage the ring as it goes over the open steam port. When the engine's running, the piston ring will not come anywhere near the steam ports. It's encouraging to find that the piston slides very evenly, very smoothly back and forth in the cylinder, and as you can see here, the cylinder bore's also in very good condition. I would just like to take this quiet moment to make an apology to any viewers if ever I mislead viewers by forgetting to put things in. I really am sorry about this, but I do not use a script. What I do is I go into the workshop and do the job, film it on my video camera, bring the video camera back into the studio, put the clips on a digital editor, and then talk to the computer. And after a while, men in white coats come and take me back to my room. So that's about it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.